Howdy and welcome to this Gen webinar titled Biotech Breakthroughs, How Puerto Rico's Unique Advantages Drive Innovation. This webinar is made possible through sponsorship by Invest Puerto Rico, a public-private partnership that works to elevate Puerto Rico as a world-class business destination. Puerto Rico's biopharma industry dates back to the opening of the first manufacturing facility in 1957. Three years later, Eli Lilly became the first U.S. pharma giant to open a plant on the island. In the six decades that have followed, Puerto Rico has attracted 15 of the world's top 20 pharmaceutical companies, including AbbVie, Abbott Laboratories, Amgen, AstraZeneca, Bristol-Myers Squibb, GlaxoSmithKline, Johnson & Johnson, Merck, Novartis, and Pfizer. Some 94,000 people are employed in the pharmaceutical sector and related companies, according to the Department of Labor. Biopharma in Puerto Rico has grown to a staggering $50 billion plus in annual pharmaceutical and bioscience plants. Puerto Rico is the U.S.'s largest pharmaceutical manufacturing region, more than the next several states combined. My name is Alex Filipidis, Senior Business Editor with GEN, Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology News. GEN was launched in 1981 by Marianne Liebert as the world's first publication devoted exclusively to biotech. More than 40 years later, GEN still provides leading coverage of the field, from tools and technology to research and the industry that has grown around biotech. In this webinar, we will hear from two people with much to share about the latest innovations in biotech and how they are accelerating drug development in Puerto Rico. Our speakers today will also discuss the advantages of doing biotech in Puerto Rico. Jose Rodriguez Orengo, PhD, is the CEO and a co-founder of MBQ Pharma, the first pharmaceutical company to develop anti-cancer products patented by the University of Puerto Rico. MBQ Pharma is developing MBQ-167, a first-in-class nanomolar IC50 inhibitor that targets both RAC and CDC42. MBQ-167 has been shown in mouse tumor models to inhibit tumor growth and to reverse advanced metastasis. Dr. Rodriguez Orengo is also a professor at the Department of Biochemistry School of Medicine at the university and has more than 25 years of experience in higher education and scientific research with more than 80 peer-reviewed articles. We'll also be hearing today from Rafael Perez, Senior Business Development Director with Invest Puerto Rico, which has as its mission promoting Puerto Rico as a competitive investment jurisdiction to attract new business and capital investment to the island. Operating out of Jersey City, New Jersey, Mr. Perez heads Invest PR's efforts across the eastern seaboard thanks to his experience, knowledge, and familiarity with tech and life sciences in New York City and the tri-state area. Previously, he served as Trade Commissioner for the Government of Canada from its New York City office and manager of the Lead Generation Team for Economic Development Marketing Firm Development Counselors International. I invite you to stay tuned and to take part in the Q&A that follows today's presentations. Our first presentation comes from Jose Rodriguez Orengo, PhD of MBQ Pharma. Let's listen and learn. Thank you for the opportunity to present uh, our story about MBQ Pharma. This is a biotech company in San Juan, Puerto Rico, where we are targeting GTPases in cancer, autoimmune and fibrosis, but particularly today, we're going to concentrate in uh, cancer. So the story behind uh, MBQ and the drug development in Puerto Rico started five years ago, and I will go through all the aspects uh, regarding this uh, development. For the beginning of this uh, story, we need to start 30 years ago when RAC won that was shown in platelets and CDC42 in yeast. And these are two proteins that were discovered as part of the row family of, of GTPases. 
And particularly, RAC1 was shown to exert an important regulatory role in cell motility, that is called amylopodia, polarity, migration, growth, and cytoskeleton remodeling, remodeling. And the same thing was seen with uh, CDC42, where basically the same aspects were observed and also membrane trafficking. In order to understand what is why these two proteins are important in the regulation in cancer, in this figure, you can see that in the left-hand side, in the primary tumor, we will need to have proliferation, migration, and invasion by these cells in order to go to other sites and to other organs. And RAC and CDC42 are essential for these processes. So if we can inhibit RAC and CDC42, we can stop there the primary tumor. In addition, we have in this process of cancer, what is called EMT intravasation, where EMT promotes solid tumors to become more malignant, increasing their invasiveness and also the metastatic activity. And therefore, again, RAC and CDC42 are really important in these processes. And if we can stop uh, this uh, movement of cells, cancer cells out into the circulation, then we can inhibit or stop metastasis. In the same way, and a similar mechanism is done in the extravasation, where now these cells wants to go into the organs, and therefore we want to move and stop uh, these processes. And at the end, we have the what is called the mesenchymal epithelial transition or MET, where now we have the secondary tumor that is related to the primary tumor. So there's different aspects or different time points and spaces where we can regulate RAC and CDC42. And that's important in order for us to stop primary tumor progression and also stop metastasis. And therefore, People around the world, several laboratories started working to try to suppress by pharmacological inhibition in different cancers, such as uh, metastatic melanoma, liver, and breast. Here in Puerto Rico, at the earliest of 2000s, uh, a group uh, led by uh, Dr. Eliud Hernandez and Dr. Uh, Surangani Dharma Guardane started working with uh, Dr. Cornelius Blar and Lynette Castillo, where Dr. Hernandez and Blar synthesized and probed uh, organic molecules for the inhibition of RAC1 and CDC42. And Dr. Damar Guardani and Castillo did the biological assessment. And they were very successful at the beginning. It took them a couple of years in order for them to get a very good uh, product, and this was called EHOP 016, where we have in the left upper side a carbosol with a primary amine that it was uh, synthesized with a tail, as you can see in the EHOP 016. And when they did the modeling, uh, they saw and showed that it fit better in the rack moiety of the active site much better than the best compound at that time that it was NSC23766. And you can see that in the lower panel in the left-hand side. So if we move now into the inhibition of RAC, we can see that the IC50 for the NSC23766, it was almost under micromolar and what, Dr. Hernandez and team did was uh, they moved and they inhibit more precisely uh, this uh, protein by a hundred times. And now we could start thinking about a product that can go into the clinic. But they didn't stop there. So they look at the molecule like EHOP 016 and they saw that the Gibbs free energy because of that long tail was very high and they started doing more uh, compounds and they came with EHOP 167. 
that it has the same carbosyl structure at the beginning with the primary amine. And then they showed uh, an aside. And after uh, several steps, they got EHOP167. That you can see that now that tail is not as long as EHOP0616. And therefore, it could fit much better into the active site of RAC. But also, as shown in the right hand side, it wasn't only for RAC, but also for CDC42. So therefore, they showed for the first time that they produce a compound that could inhibit both proteins at the same time. And when they uh, measured the IC50 for RAG and CDC42, they showed that it was 10 times better than EHUB 016 and a thousand uh, times better than the previous best compound. So they took this compound and they put it in the, into the animals and also in different cells. And they showed that EHUB 167 inhibits breast cancer tumor growth in two different uh, animal models uh, with cells, where the first one is the MDA MB435, that is a human trastuzumab resistant tumor cell model. And you can see clearly in the left hand side panel that it could inhibit the tumor growth up to 90%. And the same thing was done with the MDA MB231, a human triple negative breast cancer tumor cells mouse model. And with small quantities, just one milligram per kilogram and up to 10 milligrams per kilo, you can see in the right-hand panel that there's uh, plenty of inhibition. But in addition to the inhibition, as shown in the, this figure, we saw that EHOP-167 monotherapy could inhibit breast cancer metastasis. And this was very surprising in terms of uh, the level of inhibition because it's basically 100%. And the two same models were used and we show that we EHOP 167 could inhibit intravasation that we mentioned previously, and also extravasation. And we didn't see any uh, tumor in lung, spleen, or kidneys with the two different uh, tumor cells models. In addition to that, we had, and we showed in uh, Dr. S uh, Dharma Wardana's lab that EHOP 167 it's not toxic uh, to these uh, rodents. So in mice, they grow as uh, the controls and also the liver proteins that we were assessed, they were in the same level as their controls. Therefore, we have compound now that has some value because it could be a first in class designation, like a dual rack CDC42 inhibitor. It could also start making uh, progress in an unmet medical need like the triple negative breast cancer. As shown previously, we have reduced the breast cancer tumor progression by 90% and inhibits the metastasis to lung, spleen, and kidneys. One thing that I have never that I haven't mentioned is that the hydrophobic moiety of MBQ of EHUB 167 at this time could cross the blood brain barrier. And therefore, we are going to do some experiments regarding the brain uh, tumors. So at that time in 2018, we started a, a company that is called MBQ Pharma, where the owner of the patent is the University of Puerto Rico. And through a representative that is the Puerto Rico Science and Technology and Research Trust, they license us the commercialization of this uh, compound in order for us to look and develop for uh, breast cancer and other types of cancers. In terms of Puerto Rico opportunities, uh, we have uh, high-class researchers that are funded by NIH, DOD, and CDC. And also we have uh, places and universities that have state-of-the-art instrumentation and facilities. And we have had and continue to have excellent collaboration with uh, 
universities are the United States and the mainland, and we have plenty of experienced pharma industry personnel. And of course, we have well-prepared and enthusiastic undergraduate and graduate students in science and engineering, and they're uh, completely bilingual. So in our quest uh, to develop this uh, project, and this compound, we started doing some dependent toxicity IND non-clinical safety assessment uh, for the package that we needed to send to FDA. And as you can see in this figure, basically we don't have any toxicity. AIM test was negative, in vivo micronucleus acids negative. The non-GLP rat and dog escalation studies were also basically none with no assessments. And the GLP 20 day rat and dog repeat those studies were negative for the whole animal and the pathology results. And the GLP respiratory CNS cardiovascular and the pharmacology uh, studies were all negative. The only positive uh, assay in terms of toxicity was an in vitro 3T3 neutral uptake for the toxicity. And now, that we're going to start a clinical trial in the second, in the third quarter of, of this year, we are going to ask our patients to avoid uh, sun. Also, we uh, continue doing some uh, experiments regarding what would happen to patients that have already metastasis. Can we stop that? So, in a study that we do, with, that we did with uh, in uh, NYU. We establish a 40 cell tumor that is highly tumorogenic and invasive. And we let it, the mice uh, to have uh, metastasis and tumor growth. And we took out those tumors as best as we could and have our clean margins. And we let the mice stay for seven days and we started and make a baseline. And after that, we did the oral treatment with MBQ-167 and Paclitaxel MBQ five times a week, Paclitaxel one times a week. And uh, we have, uh, after two weeks, we have image and excise lung and we quantify the metastasis. So you can see now in these figures, the primary tumors that were, that were established during the first uh, 14 days. And how they did the uh, excise uh, of these uh, tumors with uh, basically clean margins, although we know that it's very difficult and some cells stayed uh, within the, the mice. Now the treatment you can see in the untreated control, there was a uh, quite high uh, amounts of uh, cancer and uh, metastasis. When we did uh, MBQ-167, 50 milligrams per kilo, were some uh, mixed uh, results. Some of the mice uh, were uh, treated uh, nicely and uh, showed nice results, but others, uh, they didn't. At that time, uh, we didn't have enough uh, MBQ-167. Therefore, we couldn't treat with uh, 100 milligrams per kilo. That, that's the dose that we are planning to have uh, for, for human trials. Also, when we did the Paclitaxel single agent, we saw that there was an increase of uh, metastasis. And when we combine Paclitaxel and MBQ-167 with only 50 milligrams per kilo, we basically stop the metastasis. You can see here now the representative lung metastasis bioluminescence imaging, the same as we saw in the, in the mice, but more focused in the, in the lung. And you can see that there's uh, not much of a uh, cancer when we treat uh, in combination of Paclitaxel and MBQ-167. When we quantify, basically, we did 99% uh, inhibition of this metastasis, of established metastasis already. But people continue asking us if, if this is a driver for metastasis or is it a driver for tumor growth in terms of RAC and CDC42, and also at NYU, we did another experiment where we silenced RAC and CDC42 genes together. 
There have been studies where they have silenced RAG or CDC42, but this was the first time that we did both of them. And when we accomplished this task, you can see here when you have the RAG and CDC42 and you add some cell line that will uh, produce uh, tumors and metastasis, after 21 days, you can see that they're all over. And the survival rate for these mice after 30 days was uh, 0%. So none after 30 days uh, uh, left. However, when we have the silence rack and CDC42, you can see a clean mice. Uh, and also the lung doesn't have any metastasis or any tumor. And the survival rate for this group was, after 30 days was 75%. After all this uh, collection of data, we submitted uh, our application for IND to FDA, and it was awarded last June. And that's the letter that we have that the study may proceed in uh, humans. So in addition, during this uh, past year, we have uh, accomplished uh, to have great uh, scientific advisory board with uh, Michael Caliuri, Dr. Uh, Hope Rugo and Dr. Ken Liebeck, all of them from well-known established entities and universities uh, with, uh, and, the, and in their own right, well-known uh, researchers in, in cancer. This is our pipeline. Uh, we are starting the phase one, as mentioned uh, later in this year. We also can have some results that this compound can be active uh, against uh, pancreatic cancer. And also we're doing some experiment with uh, autoimmune disease. And we have other products that we are going to be uh, establishing and studying for pan cancer. So the next steps for the uh, MBQ Pharma mentioned uh, several times, we're going to start the first patient first dose during the third quarter of this uh, year. We need to do a food and drug interaction study that, that will start in first quarter of 2024. And the drug-drug interaction study that that's going to be in the fourth quarter of 2024. And we are continuing our preclinical studies for other cancer types during the second quarter of, the, of next year. So again, what are the Puerto Rico opportunities? Uh, we were blessed and we are taking advantage of the tax credits that we provide and uh, Rafa has, is going to talk about. Also, we have a high-class manufacturing facilities. The API for MBQ167 was created here in Puerto Rico, so we didn't, know, we didn't need to go elsewhere to do that. We have a great telecommunication infrastructure in the island and excellent global patent lawyer firms. And of course, we are under FDA uh, jurisdiction. So come to Puerto Rico and uh, start doing some development also, as well as we have done so far. Thank you for the opportunity to present our story of MBQ Farm. Hi, good afternoon and good morning for some of you. My name is uh, Rafael Perez and I'm the Senior Business Development Director for Invest Puerto Rico. We are a nonprofit economic development organization focused on attracting investment and driving the economic development prosperity for the island. First, I would like to say thank you to Generic uh, Engineering uh, and Biotech News for inviting us today to present the Puerto Rico's Biosciences ecosystem during this webinar. Now, you see in your front of your slide here, Game Changers Welcome Home, and I'm gonna go through some of these slides here to present what is it that we offer to our biotech, to the biotech community. Uh, to kick things off, I would like to share a bit about Invest Puerto Rico and how we can support companies in their future growth plans. Well, we are, as, as our mandate, uh, we, are, we were created back in 2017 as the official business attraction organization for the island and utilizing the expertise of the private, private and public sectors. Our mission is, is twofold, is to attract investment, create jobs, and attract capital. Services that we provide is, to, is providing data and information about Puerto Rico's economy and industry sectors to enable informed decision-making through their site selection process. 
assist with the process of, of identifying commercial and industrial real estate for projects, connecting companies to both the public and the private sector, um, and with the talent that they need to operate. Servicing, servicing as, a, as a connector, the Invest Puerto Rico organization uh, is focused on uh, as an enabler to uh, help companies that are looking for real estate, from talent to learning some of the, uh, the uh, processes and courses of action to establish a business. That we have strong connections on the island through partners that are from legal to tax, to accounting, to even real estate and all the above. That we have a service directory as well that we featured on our website that we recently launched to help companies that are looking to connect with local providers um, and businesses on the island. I want to give you a good, bit of an economic snapshot here of Puerto Rico. Beyond its beautiful beaches and vibrant culture, Puerto Rico offers unique opportunities to innovative biotech companies. Puerto Rico's economy, economy was transformed from an, an agricultural and to an industrial and service oriented one. Puerto Rico's economy has evolved and inserted itself in a globalized world. Our population is about 3.2 million people who are more populous than 20 states and with the largest and most diversified economy in the Caribbean. We export to over 135 countries around the world. And you know, one, of the, one, one wants to wonder, what is Puerto Rico's economy like? Our government has created public policies and economic development strategies that have been readjusted as needed according to the times to stay competitive. We seek to achieve Puerto Rico's sustainable economic growth through a robust business ecosystem and a global class economy based on knowledge and innovation. We have done manufacturing for, for many, many years. And as you can see, see by this chart, we represent over close to 50% of our GDP is focused around manufacturing, more so on the pharmaceutical and medicine, medical device, electrical equipment, and so forth. Tourism represents only seven to eight percent of our GDP. So, as you can tell, manufacturing is, a, is an important uh, key for the growth of the economy in Puerto Rico. Our value proposition and why Puerto Rico. I want to spend some time on what drives our economy, particularly in the biosciences ecosystem. Yes, we have some of the largest pharma and CMOs in the island, and we are fostering more research and innovation and development. Recently, companies like Neo Pharma or Pharmaceutical company with headquarters in Mexico, expanded its footprint in Puerto Rico with a $60 million investment for the development and commercialization of NeoCare, a COVID oral treatment. It is predicted that 2.5 million NeoCare COVID treatments will, will be manufactured on the island and sold across 15 countries over the next three years. Here's a map of some of the other larger pharma, pharmaceutical companies and CMOs that are across the island. Also, I want to talk about cytomimia therapeutics, originally out of California, without still operating in California with operations now in Puerto Rico. It is a clinical stage immunotherapy company that is developing a novel class of engineered natural killer cell-based cancer therapies, opened its first clinical cell manufacturing facility in the island, leveraging proprietary and well-characterized natural killer cell expansion and engineering technologies to advance its tumor reactive NK cell therapies for patients with cancer. The, the clinical cell manufacturing facility in Puerto Rico, uh, specifically in Toa Baja, is custom designed to support all manufacturing needs with the company's cell therapies, allowing the company to accelerate its research and development. I also want to add that Puerto Rico produces six of the top 10 biologics in the world. Here are some quick facts. Puerto Rico has the highest concentration of both pharmaceutical and medical device manufacturing professionals in the US. We are often referred as the America's medicine cabinet. The island currently hosts 11 out of the world's top 20 pharmaceutical companies, including Amgen, AbbVie, Bristol Myers Group, Sartorius, Turumo, Boston Scientific, Stryker, and Medtronic, and many, many more. Further, According to the Labor, uh, Bureau of Labor of Statistics, Puerto Rico led U.S. sports in pharmaceutical medicine from manufacturing in 2020, accounting for 19.3% of total U.S. exports. We have a very business-friendly climate. As a jurisdiction, Puerto Rico offers the same level of, of operational security, stability, and protection as you expect from the United States. This means the U.S. dollar is the official currency. We operate under the same intellectual properties and pen and protection. Same regulatory laws, and we manufacture goods. Can, and manufactured goods can be uh, can be labeled as made in USA. So if it's made in Puerto Rico, it's made in the USA. 
Now I'm going to share Puerto Rico's secret sauce, and that's what stems from producing top talent across the island. 50% of a university graduates hold STEM degrees, creating a talent pool of 20,000 plus STEM graduates annually. According to the University of Puerto Rico, Mario Guas, is it, it is the 15th of the top 20 chemical engineering schools in the U.S., as well as 11th granting chemical engineering master's degrees. And, and now over 80, what, what's even more remarkable about the island is that we, all, we have over 80 universities around the island, and the largest being one of the, the University of Puerto Rico, Maya West. Six, the fun facts here about this school is that it's the sixth highest availability of sciences and engineers in the world, according to the most economic forms global competitors report. Here's a map of all the 80 plus universities around the island that are clustered. Uh, University of Puerto Rico, Maya West is in the western part of the island, and is uh, the number one public university graduating Hispanic engineers, and is top attending graduating women engineers. Furthermore, Puerto Rico has the highest concentration of both pharmaceutical and medical device manufacturing professionals in the US. In 2021, the employment location quotient was at, at the highest with Puerto Rico at, at the top. And then you notice that some of the other strong life sciences clusters like New Jersey, North Carolina, California are not close at all. Location, location, location. I think this is one of the most uh, the strategic approaches about Puerto Rico is that uh, advantage, excuse me, is that it is between the Americas and it makes an ideal entry point for North America and Latin American markets. Direct access to cities in the U.S., East Coast, Europe, and Latin America. Access to shipping and air routes. We have an infrastructure that is pretty strong with three uh, major airports around the island and 11 seaports. The main airport being Luis Munoz Marin International Airport in San Juan. It has a very sophisticated supply chain capacity for temperature control, sensitivity materials, and goods. And it's the largest non-contagious foreign, foreign trade zone in the U.S., which allows companies to store or process raw materials, components, and finished goods while deferring or eliminating the custom duty rates of such merchandise. Our infrastructure and logistics, federal funding is driving infrastructure improvements, and the private sector is also playing a major role. Local government is committing funds towards improving the infrastructure, $400 million for broadband in the next five years, over $200 million to build a 5G network, and $12 billion to rebuild the energy microgrid. Along with all the infrastructure improvements that are, that are still invested, Puerto Rico yet represents a strong cluster of biosciences companies and medical device. Here's a map to showcase all of our clusters around the island that include major pharma and med device over the last 60 years. We have big names like Abbott, Lilly, Boston Scientific, as I mentioned before, Medtronic has four facilities across the island with more, more than 3,000, 4,000 employees. Then we have some of the big major farmers like BD, Lilly, Sato Amin, I mentioned earlier on the, the, in that San Juan. Then we have Baxter, McNeil, and many more. In addition to Puerto Rico's farmer manufacturing landscape, the island is hosted research centers that provide commercial and academic, academic space to address world, world challenges. You're asking yourself, you know, where do we have landing pads? Um, where are the landing pads? And we have some, some major ones here that are making huge strides in the biotech field. These include the Mo Molecular Science Research Center and the MSRC, the Prime Life Sciences Research Lab in Puerto Rico, as well as the PDMO Ocean Bio. We have, which is a partnership development man management organization that has over 180,000 square foot of facility dedicated to research. A unique business model for gene and cell therapy startups building blending autonomous manufacturing capacity with interconnected infrastructure to support the development from preclinical to commercial start, serving as a CGMP incubator space. Also, our Puerto Rico Science Trust who is, which is instr instrumental growing uh, the ecosystem for supporting existing innovators like MBQ Pharma, who you will hear about through precision targeting of cancer and the advancements from bench to phase one via this webinar. So what are the other, some of the other benefits of uh, doing business of, in, in Puerto Rico? To incentivize economic development within the island, the government of Puerto Rico has enacted laws and economic funding programs to reduce taxes subsidize operations and promote investment via our access state incentive code. This is granted in a form of a decree, constitutes a contract between a grantee and the government of Puerto Rico. 
in the, in the Texas interest period, which is about 15 years, 15 years and extendable to another 15 more years. As you can see, we have a local tax rate of uh, corporate income tax rate of 1%, 0% federal corporate income taxes on locally sourced income, 0% distribution of dividends rate rated, 75% exemption on property tax, 50% municipal license exemption, and 75% exemption on construction taxes. Other tax credits that are uh, uh, accessible for buying products for manufacturing in Puerto Rico, and our research and development for activities for, as a tax credit, which is offered up to 50% for qualified investment. The R&D investment must be incurred by the exempted business for the improvement of procedures, products, or services, which is part of the criteria. Other buckets that we do offer are cash grants uh, under the Department of Economic Development and Commerce, which is our partner. They offer cash grants for job creation, infrastructure funds, and machine and equipment. And then we have federal programs like the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, WIOA, that offers 50% matching funds for OJT up to uh, $13 to reduce per, per hour pay rate and 50% 50, 50 of the training cost for specialized training and other programs, as you can see, for new works incentives and retraining of, of workers. Last but not least, I want to invite you to Puerto Rico. We offer a great quality of life from beaches to living and working in a rich cultural paradise. Please check our website at investpr.org and follow us from, uh, for upcoming events. And do not hesitate to reach out to our Best Puerto Rico team if you have any questions or interest in taking a closer look at Puerto Rico. Have a great day. Thanks, Rafael, and uh, thanks, Jose, for your presentations. We come now to the portion of our webinar in which we set aside time for questions from you and everyone else watching, and of course, for responses uh, to those questions. I invite you to please write your questions in the chat box located on the bottom of your screen. I'll be sharing those questions with today's speakers, and they'll respond. While you're thinking and writing out questions, uh, I'll get things started with a, a question of my own to both Jose and, and Rafael. Uh, how would you sum up both Puerto Rico's strengths, some of which uh, you've discussed in your presentations, and challenges as a center for biotech R&D and manufacturing activity? I'll kick it off. And thank you, Alex. Uh, and Thank you for inviting us to this uh, wonderful webinar presentation live here. Um, I, I'm Rafael Perez, as you heard my presentation with Invest Puerto Rico. There's strengths at Puerto Rico that have been going on for, for decades now. Um, you know, our, our battle proposition to companies and in, in for the past 60 years that we've been able to have the ability to scale our manufacturing uh, through some of the big clusters that we have right now on, around pharma, medical device, our people, uh, which speak three languages, we always say, Spanish, English, and GMP. Uh, we also have other strengths like our benefits, right? Our incentives that are very attractive for companies looking to, to develop their research and development. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, our, you know, we have an infrastructure where we have now an ecosystem of attracting companies in the gene cell therapy. We have the landing pads. We have um, uh, in, in incubators that are here to... Uh, to, to demonstrate that we are open for business. And obviously we just not, don't wanna be known for just doing manufacturing. Uh, our challenges, obviously we do need more um, clean rooms. Uh, I think that's uh, uh, in real estate assets. Uh, that's something that uh, I think that's a, de a demand that is happening across the world and bigger li other life sciences clusters uh, that we compete with. And it is also finding our workforce. Um, you, know, you know, we need to expand our talent. Uh, we have a great uh, universities, which is another strength of, of ours, is that we we speak, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. biotech engineers producing uh, around um, uh, around the island, and we have over 80 university institutions around the island, and we just need to re uh, retain it and also um, make sure that we are co our, our talent stays on the island. Obviously, we've had many companies come to us and see um, that 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 that, uh, that benefit from the uh, the skills that we have when it comes to. Uh, learning uh, what is quality assurance, uh, understanding the FDA, FDA rules, um, which is really has been around for 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 decades now, right? So I think 
the other the other strands that I would say is that the the company see us as a if it's as a U.S. territory is a huge benefit, right? If it's made in Puerto Rico, it's made in the USA. I think uh, us operating as a as a U.S. framework uh, gives us a, 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 a definitely a big edge for companies looking to expand their their, their uh, pharmaceutical and uh, manufacturing presence on the island. And again, we've been doing it for over sixty years now, and I think that's that's here to stay. Yeah, and I, I just want to uh, stress uh, what Rafa tells uh, regarding the personnel and the quality that we have in students. Being a professor at the University of Puerto Rico Medical Sciences campus, I can uh, assure you that the quality that we have uh, in these individuals is top notch. And uh, this is also rely in terms of most of the universities from the states, Stanford, Yale, Harvard, they come here and uh, to recruit our students uh, to go uh, and, and study there. So when you come to Puerto Rico, you will have the best uh, type of uh, personnel in terms of uh, GMP, as uh, mentioned by Rafa, also GLP. And we have also expanded into uh, clinical trials. So you can do it all here in Puerto Rico. Great. One, one other, one other mm -hmm. challenge I think that is starting to uh, uh, reconvert now is that is we've heard about from the local community as well as access to capital. We recently launched this investor platform called Impeller. And now what that that's going to signify uh, um, an ecosystem where we can actually strengthen our existing footprint of companies already. Whether you, especially if you're in the biotech space, uh, this this platform uh, gives access to over a thousand accredited and unaccredited investors that we've launched. You know we've spoken, engaged with from venture capital, family offices, and private equity firms. So we're building those strengths uh, uh, over time. And I think that's something that we, we've heard from locally. And, and that I think that that's going to be more relative now moving forward as more biotechs start to uh, sp spin out from, uni from universities around the world. Hmm. Rafael, are those domestic uh, sources? Are those folks from the mainland US uh, expanding into Puerto Rico? I would say uh, all of the above. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Great. And uh, how much did the COVID-19 pandemic either build on Puerto Rico's strengths or add to its challenges for biotech? I'd say it has, it has accelerated uh, more since COVID. Um, and, you know, in our, in our, in our business, in our industry and in economic development, we've seen um, talking to companies from all around the world that there's been more push for the supply chain, more reshore emphasis right in now through the federal administration there's been a bigger focus on strengthening uh the, the US and US territories uh capabilities to serve uh, and and especially in excited um recently success stories from a local company uh, that has actually has headquarters uh in Mexico Neo Pharma which is one of our CMOs on the island has invested over 60 million dollars to uh, uh <clears throat> manufacture um, oral care treatment for for covid covid so we're obviously investing in the same thing goes to um, the Puerto Rico Science Trust in partnership with the uh, Department of Economic Development Commerce to provide cash grant programs to um, uh, do more advanced research around COVID uh, drugs that to avoid another pandemic. And I think that's that's just some great examples of what we're trying to let build in our as far as our infrastructure to to be ready for the next uh, uh, wave, it might say, in the future. And I think that's something that will continue, and I and you'll see um, more more focus on 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 building those around doing more research and development collaboration, and then also us working with uh, very closely with the uh, hopefully with the U.S. federal government and departments like BARDA, for example, that <clears throat> on, on, to avoid uh, future uh, uh, disruptions, pandemics. Great. Uh, um, say and. Uh, I'm bringing in uh, from one of our viewers uh, today, Sydney has a question. Are there lab incubator type resources, he asks, like Lab Central in Boston available in Puerto Rico? Uh, yes. Uh, go, ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Rafa. Go ahead. I, I welcome Lab Central, first of all, to Puerto Rico. Um, it's a great organization, but we do have a uh, similar incubator space, uh, CGMP, for example. We have a uh, organization called Ocean Bio, uh, based in the western part of the island near Agu in Aguadilla. Uh, it's more of a partnership development and manufacturing model with where it's, it's, it's uh, accelerating uh, research uh, from bench to phase one to through phase three. What gets me excited about that is that 
this company is is uh, this this incubator is uh, uh, is focusing primarily on the, on the gene cell therapy space, which is the next wave right of, of innovation now. And we're working very closely with them to attract biotech companies. Uh, that's just one example. We have other landing pads like the Molecular Science Research Center um, in the in the island that is um, has uh, certain uh, institutions has a vivarium uh, in in place uh, for for the development and over uh, twenty researchers uh, to provide that infrastructure. And and then we have you know the Forward Center uh, that is managed by the uh, Puerto Rico Science Innovation Trust uh, to encourage more uh, uh, in, you know more companies to incubate uh, within the island and for those that are lo local businesses or even uh, startups that have spun out out of these um, uh, the University of Puerto Rico Mayores, for example that have able are able to use some of the space there for research uh, go ahead Jose yeah and I can assure you uh, Alex that the facilities that we have here are top notch uh, they have the state of the art equipment and uh, particularly the Molecular Science uh, Research Center. They have uh, invested uh, millions of dollars uh, for companies or uh, small companies to come in and uh, have their space there. So we, they can also produce their compounds. They have uh, organic chemistry, they have uh, inorganic, they have uh, biochemistry. So basically you can do all the experiments that you might need uh, in the non-GLP uh, arena. And there's some spaces that they have uh, dedicated for GLP in small scale. So you can also do some experiments there that could help you in the filing to uh, FDA. Great. And uh, Sydney has another question, which I think dovetails with some topics I, I wanted to get into and will a little bit. Uh, uh, Sydney says, as a CEO of a drug discovery and development organization, uh, I'm interested, uh, he says, in, to know about drug discovery biotech company landscape uh, in Puerto Rico. How many drug discovery biotech companies are located uh, in Puerto Rico? What supports and what talent attraction and retention efforts, ease of operation and effects of changes in, in weather patterns? So, so yeah, uh, we were... We were the first Puerto Rican uh, company that came up uh, five years ago. Uh, so we have been uh, breaking some ice uh, here and uh, moving forward the uh, process of production and uh, making sure that we have all the eco ecosystem uh, to work with uh, and produce the quality for uh, patients to have the product given to them uh, in phase one studies. And therefore, we can uh, assure the Sydney that uh, here we can have all the elements uh, for us to move forward uh, from the discovery part. Uh, you can be uh, associated with uh, some of the greater, uh, great researchers that we have at the University of Puerto Rico and other universities here in, in, in the island and make sure that uh, those agreements uh, are put forward and. There, after that, we have uh, the help of Invest Puerto Rico and some other entities like the Puerto Rico Science Trust that we can move uh, into further steps in the development of uh, products in the in the island. Great. And uh, Puerto Rico's biomanufacturing infrastructure includes eight contract manufacturing organizations or, or CMOs uh, with services ranging from biologics, OSD manufacturing, and, and micro lab services. If you can discuss, Rafael, about some of these companies and uh, uh, what they're doing on the island. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a, a good uh, cluster of these companies around the island. And to just to give you a, a name of few, we have uh, Thermo Fisher, uh, which is uh, known as Pathion locally. Uh, we have Neo Pharma, uh, which is specialized in oral uh, care and treatments, which I mentioned, uh, Neo Pharma CMO. Uh, we have uh, GK Pharma CMO. We also have PureCap, which is a uh, subsidiary of a big holding uh, company out of China. Um, and then we have Gallifer, Alvara, uh, which all are have been quite active on, on the island, in, in, in whether it is in nutraceutical, over-the-counter, uh, biologics, um, and, and all the above. Um, so, you know, that's just a small handful of them, but then we have the big pharmas that we have over, you know, we have 11 of the top 20 pharmaceutical companies, uh, for example, Lilly, AstraZeneca, mm -hmm. um, 
uh, Johnson and Johnson and, 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 and many others. Um, I do want to go back to some of the discovery, that discovery question though, that I think that that's starting to transition as we see more pharma and smaller biotechs. I mean, we, I mentioned in my presentation about cytomine therapeutics, but there are more of those type of companies that we're starting to see a lot more in the clinical stage and also in the immunotherapy uh, 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 novel class of uh, natural killer cell-based cancer therapies. Another companies that it's that are that are also very active, um, uh, it, which is a big health issue on the island, is uh, uh, battling prostate cancer research and management. Is MIR Scientific, uh, which we're really excited about. Originally headquartered out of New York, and they're in, uh, they're on the island, very active now. Um, so there is a mix now, right? You're starting to see a mix of uh, of, of this biotech in the, in the mm -hmm. therapy space, but now we have this these CMOs, which are um, most for the most part, <laughs> most of them are in the full capacity. Um, and, and, and then, um, uh, that, and also welcoming to, to, you know, welcoming more, of course, on Allen. Now we've seen a lot of consolidation within the CMO and uh, CDMO contract development and manufacturing organization industry lately, only a few larger players surviving while smaller companies are being uh, acquired. How much of a concern is this to Puerto Rico and how have the CMOs on the Island been able to continue functioning and, and growing on their own? I mean, they've been quite active. Um, I, I mean, to me, what I've noticed is that there's still a lot more interest um, because of the benefits that I mentioned is the talent piece and the uh, the uh, the uh, the attractive uh, of the uh, the incentive attractions, right? Like the, the local tax rate of four percent and the capital gains, um, and also cash grants that we offer. Um, right now, workforce is 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 the best uh, currency you could offer companies, right? So they're all looking scrambling everywhere. Um, so, you know, yes, with the, consol the consolidation is happening and what, what you're starting to see that what we're starting to see is that companies are investing more, but generating less jobs. And I think that's, that's happening across other industries as well. Uh, but, you know, we, we haven't, one of the things that you, we learned about our companies on the islands that they're so, you know, they're so resilient, um, as well. They love doing business, the, the talent, the, the workforce piece of personnel is very loyal. Uh, they very, very have very low turnover rate. I mean, um, you know, you take uh, companies like on the Met, like Medtronics that have, you know, producing over 90% of the world's pacemakers for, for facilities. I mean, they, they got hundreds of jobs uh, and they still continue to expand. So we're starting to see a lot more expansion. We did recently attract a company out of, uh, out of India, Autobindo, uh, which uh, last year uh, through, a, through a, a conference um that was one virtual at one point during the pandemic and they're now um you know expanding for up to 100 500 jobs and investing over 100 million dollars uh that's that's those are success stories that we are looking uh to looking for more right versus the uh the consolidation is going to happen regardless right and, you know and then that that's happening i think in uh in other parts of the world and, and alex uh having all this uh variety of uh, CMOs here in Puerto Rico allows us uh, to start uh, doing the one or two kilos that we need for the first experiments in the non-clinical uh, area. And then we can move forward. And once uh, we get approval, maybe uh, we'll be able to uh, produce the compounds even here. Mm. Now, I know, uh, Rafael, you began in, in, in the early response bringing up uh, that one key to Puerto Rico success had been tax incentives in manufacturing and r and I know Section 936 has been repealed, but there are other tax incentive measures that are in place. What are some of those that are most relevant to biotech uh, and pharma? And this brings up to a, one of Sydney's questions here is, is there a cost advantage to Puerto Rico versus China or India? Yep. Uh, so... Yeah, 936 tax bill obviously doesn't does is long gone right and that's many years ago so uh our general tax benefit is it's under our incentive called uh called act 60 and that gives you the four percent local corporate income tax rate zero uh zero percent federal corporate uh, income tax on locally sourced income zero percent on distribution of dividends uh, rate and 75 percent exception on property taxes and so on but then we all uh, we also have other buckets, um, uh, tax credits, and cash grants that we offer that I think are very, uh, very aggressive, and I think are very, very attractive, smart as well. Um, 
on the R and D side, right? Which I think it's for those companies and uh, with uh, dealing with non dilutive funding, we offer up to fifty percent five zero of, of an R and D as a tax credit. Uh, and those could be, um, you know, obviously there's criteria for you to be doing research and development on the island. But what's even more attractive, those are could be sold on the in the market in Puerto Rico, and they're in demand up to ninety two cents to a dollar, right? Um, obviously, we like to see more research and development happening on that. But if you compare us to other uh, countries like um, um, Australia uh, or or Canada, very uh, do offer very attractive incentives on R and D. We st stick out the most. Um, and that, that's something that we started to see a lot more um, so in the in the island. And then we have cash grants uh, for job creation, uh, infrastructure, machine and equipment. And we have WIOA, which is a workforce innovation and in, uh, program, which is a federal program that is offered for uh, companies. So, you know, the uh, the local tax rate, the cash grants, um, uh, job the uh, for job creation and infrastructure and the R&D. Um, Obviously, we 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 would put a decent package together when we bring companies to the island, when we attract companies to the island, and I think that's something that we um, um, are starting to realize that that is that is a huge icing on the cake for us, right? Along with the talent piece, um, you know, yes, there, there's uh, when you look at other places like China and India, obviously they're they they have their it's all about pricing, I believe there, um, but now we're starting to see that shift a lot more. Because of the um, the the, uh, the 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 ask from the federal um, uh, from the feds, obviously they want to reshore and have things in U.S. territory. I think that's taking a lot more. I, I mentioned my comment about if it's made in the Puerto Rico, it's made in the U.S. Obviously, that's that's huge, huge uh, benefit for us, and I think that's continue to that will continue to be the case. Um, uh, Jose, I don't know if you want to add anything else to that. I I guess that uh, you have said most of uh what we what we have had uh here here in puerto rico so basically uh this, the same aspects that uh you you mentioned uh we have had uh several uh and we have taken advantage of on this uh in our company because of these uh tax credits because then we can uh sell them or sell them uh, as a uh, uh rafa Call you, and then we can get that money and put it back into into our company. That has been a very big uh, help, particularly for small uh, biotech companies as like ours. If I may add to Alex, is this, this to apply for this incentive? Obviously, there is a, there is a process um, uh, which is filing for a decree, and that decree basically is a contract with the government, fifteen years, right? Which is also renewable for another fifteen more years. Essentially, you get grandfathered in. Um, so, so there, and we walk you through that process. As us as an organization, Invest Puerto Rico, we walk you through, you know, applying for the decrees and then these incentives and how that um, to make, you know, these. It's part of our service, right? So, uh, but you know, fifteen years of 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 having that grandfathered in, you know, with that four percent local tax rate, et cetera. I mean, I think that's that's a huge draw. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got less than two minutes left, but uh, I want to ask for you both, Rafael and, and Jose, what do you see as the future of biotech in Puerto Rico in terms of what specialties or, or what we'll see in, in terms of how the industry uh, can be expected to grow? Let's start with uh, MBQ Pharma. Uh, we have established that this can be done uh, here in Puerto Rico through uh, intellectual property from uh, the University of Puerto Rico. Therefore, we are able to, to do this. And uh, we hope that others uh, will continue the path. Uh, definitely, we will uh, continue uh, producing and uh, doing uh, more research and uh, more development in Puerto Rico through uh, MBCO Pharma. And uh, we hope that others can join us uh, here in. Puerto Rico, that one thing that uh, Rafa didn't tell is that we have uh, great weather also. Yeah. <laughs> great. And um, if that's it, then um, that's about all the time we've got for uh, this webinar. Thank you so much, uh, Jose. Thank you so much, Rafael. I was sorry. If, you don't mind, if I, I could add more yeah. to the, the okay, uh, sure. Right, so. I mean, the future is right for the Puerto Rico. Um, by the way, we also have not just weather, but also a great beaches. And, and that's <laughs> I don't have to say that uh, to anybody else, but 
I, I do have to agree with what I'll say. I mean, the research collaborations is going to be bound to happen a lot more, and that's going to increase more activity. Um, you know, we have the uh, the Puerto Rico Science Trust as an anchor of this as well, right? Through SBIR grants uh, that are that are being offered to uh, entrepreneurs, innovators, or, or like we call it game changers. Um, but we also have, um, you know, this what's happening in the western part of that, for example, with the with the Ocean Bio uh, CGMP incubator, and then with the MSRC Four Center. Uh, we're starting to create hubs, and I think that's important as we uh, develop these hubs to be around these life sciences cluster. At the same time, engaging more uh, with universities, um, and you know, there's this initiative to also build our our, our workforce, uh, uh, which is called our 21st Workforce Development Program. Uh, there's there's the you know the government is making a big push, and, and West Puerto Rico is in in the middle of this too, and we want to be the uh, the ones bringing these these biotechs to the island, and I think. That the focus on gene cell therapy will be something that will put us, uh, will put place us as a leader. Uh, while we establish these in, these hubs of R and D, I think that's where we're headed. Somebody mentioned acts about the uh, the uh, Lab Central. I mean, that's how Boston Watertown, Watertown Cambridge started. Um, we're not trying to become that, right? We want to be unique, and and we want to be able to say to the world that you know we we are we have the the assets. We already have the talent piece that is resilient. Um, and and the benefits and the um, location is key for us, right? We have these hubs already established. So um, again, thank you for for inviting me and and you know invest Puerto Rico is here to help. Jose, yeah, thank you for for the invitation and uh, we welcome uh, others uh, into the biotech uh, world here in Puerto Rico. Great, and uh, thank you uh, so much, uh, Jose and Rafael, uh, for uh, uh, taking the time. Thanks especially to uh, you uh, viewing uh, this webinar. And uh, for Jen, I'm Alex Philippides. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, everyone.